Welcome to They Think It's All Over. Now, David Gower promised to buy everyone on the production team a drink if England won the Test Series in Pakistan. And after our historic victory, David naturally has gone into hiding. <laughs> so, in his place, we have a top international centre-forward who scored nine goals for England, one of them not against San Marino. <laughs> Ian Wright. <laughs> Alongside him and Jonathan is a former Glasgow Rangers hard man turned controversial chef, who says that despite all the broken bones and flattened noses, there'll always be a place in his heart for cookery. <laughs> Gordon Ramsay. <laughs> With Rory and Gary is a comedian who says his favourite TV appearance to date is when he appeared on Call My Bluff, which in my book makes him a complete snadge fadget. <laughs> Dave Gorman. <laughs> We introduce a new round now, all about feuds between sportsmen and what started them in the first place. We've called it handbags. Gary, Rory and Dave. We kick off with the Manchester United pair Teddy Sheringham and Andy Cole. And Cole and Sheringham. It's his hat-trick. Now, United's number one strike partnership haven't spoke to each other in almost three years, but Gary's team, how did this feud start? Andy Cole's never scored for England, has he? Andy Cole? No, I don't think yeah. so. Shame he never played against San Marino, really. <laughs> <laughs> oh, scored, oh, you scored four goals against Malaysia, did you? Yeah. yeah. 44 yeah. others as well. I'm with you, righty. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, right, right, right. It's right, funny because, right. you see... Girls, girls, <laughs> girls! <laughs> They used to say, watch Gary Lineker, he runs, you must watch him, he's always there. And I watched him and he, he didn't move. <laughs> yeah. Do you think it's uh, a feud because one of them had the audacity to park his Lamborghini in the Fuwawi <laughs> section of the car? <laughs> was Teddy not invited to take part in one of um, Dwight York's home videos? Then? <laughs> 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 you must have seen them, haven't you? Uh, to be fair, no, I haven't. You're, I in, one, you're in one of these. How's <laughs> <laughs> operating the camera? <laughs> Yeah, I yeah, saw the papers going like that. Yeah, well, <laughs> <laughs> it's very hard. I've got to be honest, I think homemade pong is the best. Yeah. <laughs> That's not Let's a just settle down to a discussion <laughs> about that, shall we? <laughs> Gordon, can I ask you a question? Yes. Goose. Mm -hmm. do, you, do, you do you truss it or do you separate the legs for better penetration? <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. Rory, you massage the skin gently. Right, yeah. What, what, with? Yeah. Well, what do you think? Olive oil. All right, yeah. What about the goose? Prize it open. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I agree, this homemade porn is the best. <laughs> so, oh, what uh, about... Well, he, he didn't, didn't um, pass the ball to one another, did they? And then they, and I didn't show him have a go at Cole for not keep working going, going, back. Keep going, I'll give you going. three points yeah. for that. Yes, yes, well done. That's pathetic, because, I, you know, we, I think we should live in a culture where we forgive and we forget. For example, Gordon, you forgive, don't you? Always. Yeah. You'd never sack someone for just wearing a blue plaster, <laughs> would you? <laughs> it all dates back to this goal scored by Bolton in February 98 and Andy Cole's supposed failure to track back. Jamie Pollock with the look up and Taylor and never tries to get it away. Oh, what a mess! But Taylor scores for Bolton. It's a gift. You see, Andy Cole didn't track back and cover the inevitable cock-up by Gary Neville. <laughs> <laughs> Andy Cole decided this year that he wanted to be known as Andrew Cole. David Beckham has hired a private detective to try and find his old friend, Andy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's cold. Oh, that's cold, Ian, Jonathan and Gordon, your handbag's dispute involves the two greatest players in the world ever, Pelé and Maradona. All these little intricate one-twos. Maradona! 
first time he's pulled the trigger, hits the bullseye. Before we get to that, though, can I just uh, say properly, let's congratulate, I think, Nasser Hussein and the boys for yeah. thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 well said. <laughs> But, you know, um, it's not necessarily all plain sailing, because out there now in Pakistan, you know, the English guys are celebrating. There's a Pakistani lynch mob looking for David Gow as we speak. So that's what we call a double result, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> well, even as we speak, he's probably having his wispy head cradled to the <laughs> of a hormonally enhanced Pakistani ladyboy. But it's just not... <laughs> We have some team players with a bit of gusto. Yeah. And mm. I'm going to do the best to foster team spirit here. Yeah. So, Gordon, mm. let's talk about chicken tonight. <laughs> Do you also consider it to be a snotty textured group, or is it a favourite in the Ramsey household? No, it's not a no, no, no. You might not fancy it now, but I bet you in a couple of weeks' time we'll find it in one of your Ponzi restaurants with a ridiculous price. <laughs> Chicken a la instanto. <laughs> Am I right in thinking, Nick, that Maradona's having a bit of a career wobble at the moment? <laughs> yeah, it's been quite a long wobble. Yeah. I've got a plan. Why don't we go out? Why don't we get him to play for Stoke, our beloved Potterers? Yeah. Let's get him back here because we know, uh, what we know about him, we know he likes a little bit of the, the naughty salt. Yeah. A bit of the powder. The naughty salt. We've got tons of China clay sitting around up in Stoke. He wouldn't know that. He would know the you are. Absolutely. Absolutely. And we know he likes a lady oh. of the night. And you've got that cousin who works in the loading bay at Waitrose with the squint. <laughs> She gets a bit gamey in the summertime, but she gives reward points, doesn't she? She'd be very happy. She'd be very happy. Wasn't it to do with um, there was a big uh, ceremony recently where um, I can't believe it. Pele turned up in a, in a white suit and Maradona tried to snort him. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I think it relates to something about his book, um, sort of slight like dodgy comment about taking up the Baker Lou line. <laughs> <laughs> the thing is, now you see, you got me thinking. Pillage like rumping me, I can't. <laughs> oh, no, I'm sick I feel like dicking tonight. No. <laughs> oh, 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 no. I'll give you three points for that. Oh, oh. The answer is that Pele blames Maradona for spreading the ru false rumour, I should say, that he's gay. Although Pele might have been able to get his own back if he'd seen this photo of Maradona and Claudio Canigia celebrating an Argentine goal. <laughs> <laughs> Even when he left Italy at the end of his career, Maradona was worth three million pounds, although 2.9 million of that was wrapped in foil and strapped to his waist. <laughs> <laughs> and at the end of that ri round, Ian's team have three points and Gary's team have three points. <laughs> Move on to our excuses round now, Gary's team. It's tennis for you. Earlier this month at the Masters Cup in Lisbon, Russian prodigy Marat Safin had the chance to end the year as the world number one. But he sadly flunked out against Andre Agassi in the semi-final. Now, of course, it wasn't his fault that he screwed up. So, what was to blame, Gary's team? What's annoying about that? That bloke, what's he called? Marat Safin, mm -hmm. so, oh. was born in the 80s. He's so young. I mean, Pam Shriver was already shaving by then. <laughs> Speaking of which, you've got a hairy crowd over there today, going. What a couple of knuckled dragons! <laughs> if you hang around, boys, you might be able to work rudimentary tools by the end of the show. <laughs> it must be really, really confusing for you when they have to try and explain that Ian Wright's surname actually does begin with a W. <laughs> <laughs> Is that kind of like a bitchy kind of vibe going yeah, on? Yeah, it's good. It's good. It's good. You're working yeah, it's out, right? I think you'll find he started it. <laughs> <laughs> what he put on Ainsley Harriet's pajamas. <laughs> The terrible thing, Ainsley was still in them at the time. <laughs> and Pelé. <laughs> I can't say Pelé, can I just get that picture? Yeah, I know, we know the picture you get. <laughs> at the end of that film, he appears to sort of fall over, twist, uh, twist his ankle, as if his shoes were inexplicably too big. Perhaps he borrowed somebody else's shoes to play the tournament. Yeah, yeah, I'll give you three points. Oh, I'll give you three points. Oh, The answer is that it was all his shoes' fault. At the press conference after Gustavo Curtin had won the title and taken over as world number one, Safin said, the shoes were not wide enough. I will tell Adidas to please change them for me. <laughs> Safin has such a short temper that last year he broke 48 rackets, including three in his match against Greg Rosetsky. Rosetsky also hurled his racket to the floor, <laughs> but he missed. <laughs> Ian, if you could not laugh before <laughs> I finish the joke. <laughs> Now, Ian, Jonathan and Gordon, it's Chelsea for you and one of their many recent away defeats against our old friend Southampton. 
Now, Chelsea have finally pinpointed the man to blame for their bad trot. Claudio Ranieri's interpreter, Gary Straker. Una partita da due volti. Il primo tempo è stato giocato molto bene da parte del Sotento. Yes, I think it's been a game of two halves. Poor Gary has now been sacked as Ranieri's interpreter and has returned to his former job as a club steward. But why? Well, he's English and he's at Chelsea, so I suppose he's got to get the sack, really, isn't he? What do you think about the, the sort of influx of, of foreigners into the uh, English game? We must be at a, some state if we have got to get a foreign manager to coach England. Yep, it's yep. not right. It's wrong. Yeah, absolutely. I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it for claps. <laughs> I don't want claps. Where's that soapbox? I'm not doing it for claps. We invented the game. For Christ's sake. Is that, if we win anything, the Swedes are going to get all the credit. Ian, <laughs> oh, yeah, as a matter of who do you think you should be England manager then? Bruce Rioch, I bet you think. Don't you ever <laughs> swear at me. <laughs> Error. You're speaking that against Sven, but on a serious note, have you seen his girlfriend? <laughs> 45, Italian, lawyer by day, fills a bikini beautifully, scrubs up very nice indeed. And Sven's got a Harley. He's got a Harley! You've got to keep all the information in. I've seen him in a picture with the Harley. He's got the moustache and everything. I don't even know that. I don't know that. You know, in, in the, the coffee advert, yeah. when you, your car breaks down, why didn't you use the mobile phone you've got in the mobile phone advert? <laughs> because, um... <laughs> Um, what he was actually saying, see, the poor guy translating didn't know what he was saying. What he was actually saying was, his quote was, what Fatty doesn't know is I've got his P45 in my pocket, and as soon as we find out where he's hidden all the pies, he's going to get the elbow. <laughs> That's not the guy, Gary, he's the victim in this. He's the man who's been sacked. I mean, I, I think the real reason why he got the sack is because he's fed up lip-reading Ken Bates' ass. <laughs> Look at his little face there, though. How could you sack him this close to Christmas? He's like a little puppy dog. He's like kicking a puppy, giving that boy a sack. <laughs> How could you say you couldn't sack anyone near Christmas, could you, Gordon? Uh... They <laughs> <laughs> wore a blue plaster. You no, wouldn't sack him near Christmas. Don't start me. Um... <laughs> I should imagine, do you not think there's possibly something... We're, we're looking for a complex answer. It's right before us. Basically, he's just shit at his job. <laughs> <laughs> just making Love it up. Thank it you! Up. Yeah. Making it up. Just making it up. Yeah, okay. Yeah, but it was <laughs> Well, allegedly, Gary Straker didn't always follow what Claudio Ranieri was saying and apparently started making up his own stuff instead. <laughs> Although that sounded pretty accurate to us. Ranieri actually tried to get rid of his translator a month ago, but every time he said, you're fired, it was translated as, give this man more money at once. <laughs> <laughs> Gary here famously learned Japanese before he went out to Tokyo, although his teammates did learn some useful English phrases from him, like, I hate training, and just put the money in a wheelbarrow. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and at the end of that round, Ian's team have six points yeah. and Gary's team well, have six points. Well done. <laughs> Obviously. Time to ask sport's most celebrated question, what's going on? Gary's team, it's you first. Cast your eyes over this. <laughs> I love that point you got in the air bit. So, explain that to us. I can't believe you've got Stoke on again. Thank you! <laughs> Is it a George Best testimonial? <laughs> <laughs> oh, cold, no. Right, oh, man. <laughs> Ian, I don't want to get your mind racing again, but apparently George Best is gay, you know. <laughs> can't tell me no one instantly got a visual of George Best rumping me, don't you? No. <laughs> no one but you. Oh. <laughs> you can just see it, when can't you? Was... The three of you in a room, George Best, Pele and you, and George Best and Pele are going, who's he? <laughs> Do you think even in his drunk state, George Best will get halfway through watching you and going, so, I'll say that again. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's going to come out as wadgering whatever uh, you do. <laughs> <laughs> that was a bit of a problem. Is that the foreign team that Paul Merson coached for? Hey, 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 hey. No, no. Don't go there, John. <laughs> it's their answer. Come on. Isn't this simply just the final of the old Turkey um, drunk footballers? Yeah. Turkey was an important word. Well done. Yes, I'll give you three points for that. 
It was a traditional match going back 60 years between two Turkish work teams. Raki Sport from the Raki factory and Wine Sport from the Wine factory. The Wine Sport team won 3-2. It was our best performance for many years, said their manager, Brian Clough. <laughs> 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 in team, we take you to Reykjavik in Iceland, where the French football team are suffering from an outbreak of the giggles. But why? <laughs> I love that. I love that oh, clip. It's God, fantastic, yeah. isn't it? They've heard Sven Goran Eriksson is going to be England manager. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm not having him. No. Not having it. <laughs> <laughs> it's always there, right at the front. <laughs> We're learning a lot tonight. <laughs> Here, Princess. Uh, what's that? Of Michael of Kent. Right. She's walking along the line and her uh, dress is caught in her knickers. She doesn't wear knickers, does she? So, let's get this straight here. <laughs> Iceland are playing France in Reykjavik no, and no, they've no, invited no, Princess no, Michael no, of no. Kent. No, no, wait, Nick, I've just got a vision, you know, because... <laughs> 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 that was the first time they had a, a, a live opera singer yep. singing live at the ground right. and give them such a cadence. Or it would be like, remember the first time you heard Ian Wright single and you couldn't stop laughing? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, that's the sort of thing. Is that right? Yeah, three points. Right, I'll give you three The answer is that the French side were laughing at the Icelandic opera singer's accent as he sung the Marseillaise. France's Emmanuel Petit recently revealed that he's seriously into leather. He said, I love the sensuality and sexuality of it. Leather is like silk. It multiplies one's sensations tenfold. Both Ian and Rory know what it's like to feel leather close to their skin. Ian, as he thunders a header into the top corner, and Rory, while it's waiting to be milked. <laughs> And at the end of that round, Ian's team have nine points, and Gary's team have <laughs> nine points. <laughs> Time now for our regulars to wrestle with the sporting icon as we play Feel the Sportsman. It's Ian and Jonathan first this week, if you'd like to take your positions. Take uh, your blindfolds with you. No, I'm so pleased about this. Ian, you, you present the uh, Guinness World Record Show sometimes, don't you? Is that right? Yes. Yeah, have you ever had Gordon on? You should have Gordon on. Because not only can he bone a duck in 20 seconds, I also saw him once, he hurled a kitchen pool to 43 feet. He must be on <laughs> and can we have our first mystery guest, please? Your time starts now. <laughs> oh, so I'm winding me up. What's I'm going to take my mask off because I'm, like, I'm scared. Hey. <laughs> Where's the person? <laughs> All right. Here you are. And, oh, I'm back in the hood. <laughs> Is it one of those Pakistani cricket fans looking for Gower? <laughs> 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 What's that you, Ian? No. I'm being pelted. It's What's like... going on? His things coming. What's going on? I think there must be a very large bird in the studio. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what it is over there, but you're a bloody good shot. It's... Can I have a go? <laughs> can we just guess quickly? Nick, <laughs> Nick, I think it's, um, one of... It's got to be someone... Ash... Go on, quick, quick, Ian! Ash shooter. Is, is Ash shooting one of gold in the, in the Olympics? Yeah, which Where is he? I'm going to get you. Yeah, Folds! Well yes, yeah, well done. Yes, three points. You hit Jonathan five times over 24. <laughs> he got me right in the bollocks. 
And can we have our second mystery guest, please? Imagining anything. <laughs> this is just a normal Friday night in for Rory. Okay. Okay. And, and your ninety seconds start now. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, it all feels like Anne Robinson. <laughs> Go on, Wally, there's your chance. <laughs> <laughs> no one's watching. <laughs> oh, hey. <laughs> this, this does ring a, ring a vague bell, I must <laughs> say. <laughs> it's a cowboy, is it Terry Venables? <laughs> Hang on. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> Rory, I've got fun. the horse. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you keep it, mate. Is it Trevor Brooking trying to get off the fence? <laughs> I think it's Dame Thor ahead, isn't it? <laughs> and she's misread the assembly instructions for a stair lift. <laughs> I can have a guess, Nick, or what? It was, in fact, Derek Williams, the British rodeo champion. <laughs> Gary's team have nine points, but Ian's team have 12. Yeah. <laughs> we stagger to a close by playing the name game. The leaders goes first. As many names as you can in 90 seconds, starting now. OK, uh, first one. Oh, get off. <laughs> oh, you can't do that! <laughs> <laughs> You've adopted this guy, I think. He's uh, your adopted son, isn't he? Sure, even. You can't get the name right. <laughs> <have you? laughs> well, I don't know. Sometimes it's got Phillips right in it. It's got Phillips. He'll get this one. Uh, he was a French revolutionary leader who was assassinated in his bath. I believe there's a beautiful <laughs> painting Napoleon. by David. He's lying there in the bath. It's quite poignant at the moment, especially for those who place so much hope on the wonderful revolutionary. You know, <laughs> Napoleon. The... No. All right. He's a Russian tennis player. We had him on earlier in the show. Oh, Marit Sapin. There you go. All right. Oh, come on. Okay. Ah, yeah. Now this is what you call a cook. She's got it all. I'm telling you, she can cook. She Dennis won... Smith. She's at Norwich. Yeah, Norwich. Yeah, well done. There. Yeah. He went Norwich. for Nigella straight away. <laughs> Norwich. Norwich. <laughs> Norwich director. Quick. All right. Okay. This guy, um, if, that, if, if some woman hurt you emotionally, she would break your heart. Yeah, and the first name is a pop star, Williams. His first name is Robbie Williams. Robbie Hart. Robbie yeah. Hart. Sorry. <laughs> All right. What am I talking about? Quick, John. It's a tough. All right. If you were making a model airplane and you you bought the incorrect adhesive, <laughs> you would have got this thing. The last name here. It's it. You you. Uh... <laughs> Very good. Well, I did my best with it. That. Well, I don't know. Pass says line to Roy, please. Nine. Nine. Okay, your time starts now. Brazilian footballer. Right, right. 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 Yeah. <laughs> If he had an extra E in it, it'd be like someone running naked across the sports event. Straker. Straker. Yeah. Gary Straker. Gary Straker, very good indeed. This bloke is the East Fife coach. Has something in common. Dave Gorman. Very good indeed. Bloody hell. It sounds like Lenny Henry's catchphrase when he played Theophilus Vildeberg. Katanga. Yeah, that's how, that's how they pronounce it in certain parts yep. of Brazil. Right? Oh, it's Catania. <laughs> Catania. <laughs> His first name is the same name as the famous feminist writer, wrote female eunuch. Jermaine. Yeah. Very good indeed. Lives Korea. near me, never invites me around. <laughs> Jermaine, that's foreign. foreign. Yeah. yeah. Jermaine, yeah, I I tell you how much time left, man? <laughs> Just you be. shut up, we're doing it. <laughs> the um, Spanish for Enough Alexander, time. as you know. Alejandro. Very good. And the second name is, oh dear. <laughs> 
I'm torn between Yuri Geller and Peter Mandelson here. <laughs> Beautiful image. <laughs> well, I'm going to start writing off again. Bender! Very good indeed. Spoonbender, obviously. Um, left back at Arsenal has the same Christian name, Cole. Ashley. Ashley. And you know what they say to you, Gary, when you're doing an advert? They say, name your price. He knew. He asked <laughs> <laughs> And uh, the last bit of the name is like a, a collection of grapes. Bunch. I was going to say hemorrhoids. <laughs> <laughs> now, this is a little... Oh, oh. Hey, hey. oh. Well, that means it's time for the tie-break question, but I don't think we should have the tie-break question. No, I think, right. as it's here... What about, do we think, girls and boys? <laughs> Jonathan versus Rory on the rodeo machine. Yeah! I think so. I think so. Yeah! I think so. Yeah! Bring yeah! on the ball. Hang <laughs> <laughs> on, what are all these safety mats going down for? <laughs> <laughs> These are new. Have we got people coming to stay? <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Whoa! Here we go! <laughs> oh, no. Really let it go that quick. <laughs> but, hey, hey. Jonathan ain't seen it yet. Jonathan ain't. <laughs> okay, Jonathan. Woo. On you go. On, Jonathan. Yeah. I did some knee highs, man. I'm just start there. I did some real loud knee highs. I once had a dream about me and Mandy Dingle. <laughs> <laughs> and your time <laughs> starts now. Round done. <laughs> Woo! Oh, yeah. Yeah. Those homemade videos are the best, don't they? <laughs> Afterwards, you can have another guy. Get up on that ball, Rory. Tell you what, it's not as easy as it looks. Try and give Rory a hand, please. Come on, Rory. Come on, OK. And the time starts now. Hey, Rory, one hand. One hand. One hand, Rory. Doesn't have to be one hand. I can't believe this. One hand. One hand. Go on, big boy, give it to us. to say that in many ways the winner is the game of rodeo itself <laughs> <laughs> but in fact Jonathan did 15 seconds and Rory did 20 oh, yeah. Yeah. So, this week's winners are Gary's team To Gary, Rory, and Dave, Ian, Jonathan, and Gordon. We're all off to Gordon's restaurant for some chicken tonight. <laughs> My name's Nick Hancock. They think it's all over. It is now. Room 101 is our double bill later this Friday night as more stars whinge to Paul Merton. Next tonight, though, a man whose career prospects seem to have been crammed into Room 101. I'm Alan Partridge. Ain't that the truth, Mum? <laughs> <laughs>